Hare Krishna, very dear devotees, welcome back once again to our ever ongoing series on the glories of our beloved Sri Vrindavandam. Namo Om Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale, Srimati Bhaktivedanta Swaminiti Namane, Namaste Saraswati Deve, Goravani Pacharine, Nipishesha Shunyavadi Pashrita Deshatarine. All glories to Sri Prabhupada. So um, we are continuing with our series on the samadhis of our acharyas, and this will uh, be part three. As we all know, in our tradition, when an acharya departs this world, we place his body in a, a samadhi, or you could say a, a, a samadhi mandir. When doing this, it's understood that the acharya eternally resides in his samadhi. Actually, I was reading that such acharyas eternally reside in five things. It's interesting. They reside in, in the knowledge or gyan given in their lectures or books. They reside with their prandhana, meaning uh, the deities that they established or worshipped that were and are their life and soul. They reside where they performed their pastimes, like their uh, Baitak means a sitting place, or their um, bhajan kutir. They reside uh, in the articles uh, or tadiya that they used, and they reside in their samadhis. Regarding um, residing uh, in uh, the, the books that they've written, we worship such manuscripts or scriptures uh, written by them, which encapsulate the knowledge given to us by them because they contain the vani or the instructions of such an acharya, which you could say are in essence non-different from an acharya. My dear god brother Charu Prabhu recalled in his memories of Sridhar Prabhupada that he was present in a temple when a reporter asked Sridhar Prabhupada, Sir, What's going to happen to the movement after you die? Meaning our movement. And before he'd even finished the sentence, Prabhupada said, I will never die. Then he paused and said, I will live forever in my books. Of his own spiritual master, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, Srila Prabhupada uh, wrote in um, Chaitanya Charitamrita, he lives forever by his divine instructions and the follower lives with him. We also worship our acharyas along with their deities when we sing bhajans like Jaya Radha Govinda Radha Govinda Radhe Rupa Goswami Prandanahe meaning Radha and Govinda are the life and soul of uh, Srila Rupa Goswami. We offer our respects to the room or rooms uh, or the place of uh, the Acharya's bhajan, in the mood that they still reside in, in that room and do their bhajan and their sadhana there. In Mayapur, um, we're building a most significant temple, the Temple of Vedic Planetarium, and we expect millions of people uh, will come to see it. But Sridhar Prabhupada's simple bhajan kutir, where he stayed there, in the very uh, early days of the Mayapur project. Uh, it's still there and it attracts the same love and devotion from devotees as does the TOVP project because Sridhar Prabhupada lived and breathed there. We worship the Acharya's um, personal articles like their padukas, their, their wooden shoes, uh, japa beads, uh, clothes, etc. because they use these articles. So the potency of their sadhana, their energy and their bhav, uh, it said, reside in these articles. When Sridhar Prabhupada kindly gave me his saffron dhoti in London in 1972, when I was on my way to preach in France, <clears throat> he said to me, a gift from a Vaishnava is a very special thing. And finally, uh, when our acharyas are placed in samadhi, um, it's considered a most sacred place because, again, they're personally present there. <clears throat> Proof of that is that sometimes 
they actually revealed their presence there. An example is, uh, shortly after his cremation, uh, Srila Raghunath Das Goswami uh, appeared to Srila Jiva Goswami, and he instructed Jiva Goswami to place his ashes in a samadhi at the uh, Radha Gopinath temple um, at, at Radha Kund. <coughs> Another example is that one time um, Srila Prabhupada told a disciple, who was his um, personal servant actually at the time, that Srila Rupa Goswami once appeared to him while he was living at the Radha Dhammadar temple in Vrindavan after taking sannyas. In those uh, early years, Srila Prabhupada, we know, would often pray to Radha Dhammadar and the six Goswamis while honoring Mahaprasadam in that kitchen room. And uh, one day he was looking out at the uh, of the window of his room at the samadhi of Sri Rupa Goswami, when suddenly uh, Sri Rupa Goswami appeared before Sri Prabhupada, as he told the pastime to his disciple, and spoke the following amazing words. Rupa Goswami said to our beloved Prabhupada, Maharaj, don't worry about anything. Go ahead and travel to the West and preach. Just preach the message of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and the chanting of Hare Krishna and you'll be successful. I guarantee because I will be right with you all the time. <laughs> Some deep insights there. <clears throat> so, who, after hearing this, would not make it a point to visit the samadhis of our acharyas in Vrindavan and, and Mayapur? An amazing thing is that even those acharyas whose samadhis we visit themselves would visit the samadhis of previous acharyas. This is our tradition. The Bhakti Ratnakara describes that after uh, visiting Vrindavan and before returning to Navadvip, uh, Janava Matsa said goodbye to all the Brajabasi Vaishnavas. Then it's described, she visited all the major temples, like Govindaji, Gopinath, Madan Mohan, Radha Vinod, uh, Radha Damodar, Radha Raman, etc. And then she offered prayers to uh, Gopishwara Mahadev, Lord Shiva, and uh, Vrinda Devi. And afterwards, before leaving, she visited four samadhis, those of... Um, <coughs> Srila Raghunath Bhatta Goswami, uh, Kashishwara Pandit, Sanatan Goswami, and um, Srila Rupa Goswami. And while visiting those samadhis, Bhakti Ratnakara says she felt a deep sorrow and cried a Ganges river of tears. She felt deep sorrow and cried a Ganges river of tears. And then Bhakti Ratnakara also recounts that <clears throat> Upon arriving in Jagannath Puri, one time, Srinivasacharya, one of our heroes, quickly ran to the samadhi of Srila Haridash Thakur, where he fell down and offered uh, uh, obeisances and deep prayers. So, now we'll discuss in detail um, the various types of samadhis in our uh, Gaudiya Vaishnav Sampradaya. It's so interesting. I really enjoyed researching this and sharing what I found, and now sharing with you what I found. <clears throat> when a Vaishnavacharya or a saintly person departs this world, his body is interred in the ground where a samadhi structure is built over it. Now, that type of samadhi where the, the full body of the saintly person is interred is called a deha. D-E-H-A, a deha samadhi, literally meaning a full samadhi. For example, the samadhi of our beloved Sridhar Pawapad <clears throat> at the Krishna Bharama Mandir in Vrindavan, it's a deha samadhi. Another type of samadhi is called a nama samadhi. It's when the saintly person's body is uh, cremated, and his followers place his ashes in the ground along with a, a silver or gold plate in which they have engraved uh, his name. 
Samadhi Mandir is built over that site. Small. Such a Samadhi is mostly, I was reading, uh, made inside the temples. Because the full body Samadhis of an Acharya uh, are always outside the temple. But these Nam Samadhis, they can be placed, they can be, um, they can be uh, in, inside a temple. And an example of this is the Samadhi of uh, Gadadhar Bhatt Goswami, which is inside a small temple on the property of the Madan Mohan temple, Sanatan Goswami's temple in Vrindavan. It's called the uh, Bhatji temple. There's the, there's the main temple of Madan Mohan, and there's a few constructions there, and, and one is this uh, uh, Bhatji temple. So another type of samadhi is known as an Anga Samadhi, A-N-G, Anga Samadhi. It's a samadhi uh, built with a bodily part of an acharya or saintly person, like some hair of the acharya uh, or his tooth or one of his bones or perhaps uh, one of his nails, like that. Interesting. Uh, for example, there, there is the famous Kesh Samadhi, or hair Samadhi, of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in Katwa. Or there is the Dant Samadhi, the Tooth Samadhi, of Gadadhar Pandit uh, in Vrindavan. I visited that temple many times. The whole temple is built around the tooth, or for the, or for the worship, the glorification uh, of, of uh, a tooth of Gadadhar Pandit in Braj. There's also a Nuk Samadhi, or a Nail Samadhi, uh, of Marari Gupta in Vrindavan. Now, all, all of these are part of the Anga Samadhis, or Samadhis uh, built uh, 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 over the um, bodily parts of a, of a sacred person. I was recently in Cyprus, uh, in the Mediter Mediterranean uh, Sea, where Many of the uh, early Christian saints are, are buried or entombed. In one of the older monasteries that, that I visited, I saw some of their bodily parts, very well preserved and displayed uh, in various ways, in, in um, glass cases, etc. And some of the items, like uh, their teeth, their bones, their hair, etc., were over 1,500 years old. Now, another type of samadhi is called a smriti samadhi, smriti samadhi, or you could say a um, memorial samadhi. Memorial in the sense that the acharya or saintly person's body was not available for placing in samadhi because he may have you know, perished while traveling in a dangerous forest or he was eaten by a wild animal or he drowned in the flood and his body could not be retrieved. So in olden days, Vaishnavas would make a memorial samadhi for marble or bricks in memory of that saint or, or sadhu. And I discovered that a number of these samadhis can be seen near uh, various uh, uh, kundas or sacred lakes in Vrindavan, uh, also at Govardhan Hill, and sometimes uh, in the backyards of old temples in, in Braj. Another samadhi is called a duli samadhi, a duli samadhi, or a dust samadhi. Again, in previous times when an exalted Vaishnava passed away, the dust from his lotus feet, uh, the dust from his kutir, where he, he did bhajan, or even the dust from the village where he was born, was placed in a silver box, or uh, I was reading sometimes a round marble box and buried in the ground. And then a samadhi mandir was built on top of that. This was a duli or uh, a dust samadhi. Uh, we can move on. There's lots of samadhis. Another type of samadhi is when a sadhu or an acharya was cremated after dying and devotees would search for a uh, particular bone in his ashes, called a uh, Atma Ram, Atma Ram. It's a particular bone that survives the burning of the body, and it's located in the rib cage, very close to, to the heart. 
it actually has the shape much like a sadhu sitting in a padmasana, meaning uh, you know the classic yogic posture. It looks like that. It's a good size bone, which is considered the house of the atma, the house of the soul. And after finding that particular bone in the ashes of the saint, it was placed in a silver or uh, sometimes a gold box and buried in the ground with five or seven silver coins. Getting some details here. It was buried in the ground with five or seven uh, silver coins. <clears throat> and on top of that, devotees would make the Samadhi Mandir. Yet another type of Samadhi is when uh, flowers from the last flower garland worn by the Acharya were placed uh, in a Samadhi Mandir. We're familiar with this in Iskan, I believe. This is referred to as a Pushpa Samadhi. Then there is a Tadiya Samadhi. Tadiya Samadhi. It's a Samadhi of the Acharyas or, that, or a saintly person's personal articles. Tadiya comes from the Sanskrit word Twadhyam, Twadhyam, which literally means belongings or things, uh, how, how is it said? Things used by the skin or body. So Tadiya Samadhi means the Samadhi of the, uh, the, the, the personal belongings of uh, uh, an acharya or a sadhu. For example, devotees would place in such a samadhi the acharya's japa mala, his kopina, or his, his uh, loincloths, uh, his neck beads, or kunti, uh, uh, his water pot, uh, a black blanket, or kanda, a black, a black blanket, it said, a kanda, or um, his stick, Lakuti, and other such articles that you know were personally used by him. One might think that you know when the acharya passes away, such important articles would better be uh, distributed to disciples or well wishers, which sometimes they are. I know Peter Palpat's many of his uh, articles were distributed to faithful and loyal disciples, but in those days there was always the fear that such items would be lost or misplaced in time. We have to consider that uh, in the past when our acharyas were living in the Vrindavan forest, there was no security. There was no locks or safes <laughs> in the forest. And there was always the fear that animals uh, in the forest would take these things. Or that um, such items would be affected by Vrindavan's extreme climate. There was also concern that disciples might quarrel or fight over possessing such items. So it was thought the best and the easiest way to avoid uh, all these concerns was to bury these tadiyas or personal belongings of the acharyas in samadhis. <clears throat> now another type of samadhi is a grant samadhi. Grant samadhi means a samadhi of scriptures. Many of you must know that there is such a Grant Samadhi near the Samadhi of Srila Sanatana Goswami, in the same courtyard actually, yeah. not far from Madan Mohan Temple. This is a, a Samadhi of scriptures written by um, primarily our, our six Goswamis and some other previous Acharyas. Now there's many reasons for placing such manuscripts uh, uh, and, and scriptures and Samadhis. The first reason is that such scriptures may, beyond, may be uh, beyond the human mind, <laughs> uh, meaning that they're, they're so deep <laughs> that we can't understand them. Go, Goswamis wrote, we have uh, scriptures, very deep scriptures that they've written, but apparently they went even deeper, and we might misunderstand them. They are only for, you know, pure, uh, self-realized, pure devotees of the Lord. So they're not for the general public. So they would be placed in, in, in a, or they were placed in that particular Granth Samadhi. Or perhaps the language, it said, is uh, impossible to understand. Uh, 
or uh, they would put uh, such scriptures in samadhi because the, 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 uh, the paper they were, were written on was very fragile. Or sometimes the scriptures were incomplete. They were being written, but the acharya passed away before the conclusion, so they were put in samadhi. Or they're damaged by bugs, or scriptures used to be damaged by rain or moisture. So they're sacred. So for any of those reasons, a scripture, a scripture would be placed in a box uh, covered with a red cloth and then worshipped properly with um, a sandal, sandal, dupe, and a garland, and then placed in samadhi. That's interesting. Now, in my readings, I, I discovered a very rare form of samadhi in the olden days. It was a Vadya Samadhi, V-A-D-H-Y-A, -A, Vadya Samadhi. This is a Samadhi in which musical instruments that were used or played by the Acharyas, like Murdungas, uh, Kartals, bells, etc., that may have been broken in time, they were placed in Samadhi. They were placed in the earth with a small shrine on, on top of them where devotees could go and you know offer prayers and, and garlands to those musical instruments used by uh, our acharyas. Another rare samadhi that I found out about is called the shaka samadhi. Shaka samadhi. This is a samadhi of um, a branch of an ancient sacred tree. For example, you know one example is the tree which Krishna jumped off into the Jamuna River to fight with the Kaliya Serpent. That tree, we, it's still present. <laughs> we pass that tree when we go on Vrindavan Perkama. It, that, that the original tree that, that Krishna jumped off to jump into the Jamuna River to fight with Kaliya. A, a branch from that tree is, um, could be put into uh, this particular Shaka Samadhi. Or Trees in forests where uh, the divine couple, Radha Shama Sundra, perform their pastimes, or even like a, a pilu bush on the banks of Shamakund, or um, the famous tamarind tree at Imlital, even trees under which our acharyas did bhajan or wrote, the, or wrote their scriptures. Of course, no one would willingly break off such a branch of a tree like that. They would be taken only if a branch fell because of a storm or heavy wind and rain or sometimes naughty monkeys would swing and break the branches of such trees which were thousands of, of years old. Actually, uh, several years ago I had the good fortune to go to uh, Bangladesh with um, Radhana Swami and several of his uh, brahmacharis we went to uh, take darshan of many of the holy places associated with Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And we had the extreme good fortune to go to Keturi, which was the uh, birthplace or the appearance place of Srinanaratam Das Thakur. It's situated uh, right on the banks of the uh, Padma River. And many of you know the pastime that before Lord Chaitanya departed, he wanted to leave uh, Prema, for Srila Naratam Das Thakur, who was going to appear after Mahaprabhu's disappearance. He was going to carry on the Sankatam movement. <clears throat> so Lord Chaitanya uh, took a pot of uh, prema, liquid prema, and he gave it to um, the uh, Padma River personified, Mother Padma. And he said that one day in the future, a young boy will come to bathe uh, in, in, in your in your waters, uh, it will be Naratam Das Thakur, you please pour this liquid prem over him. So that pastime transpired, it happened, Naratam came, as a young boy, he bathed in the river, and Mother Padma came and poured this uh, nectar over him, and he experienced the eight symptoms of ecstatic love of God. That pastime took place just, just on the banks, or just into the water on, on the banks of the Padma River, and uh, there was one tree a big tree overhanging into the water, or over the water, and under that tree, that's where Naratam uh, achieved that prema, or got that prema from Mother Padma. And that tree still exists, 450 years later. 
So when we went, when we went to Ketori, I went to visit that tree, take darshan of that tree, and I saw that there's a, a, a Gaudiya moth temple there for the sole purpose of worshipping that tree. So with a few brahmacharis, we, we sat down and we were chanting, you know, just, just near the water, under this tree, we were chanting our japa, and suddenly a, a big storm came, just out of nowhere, a big storm came. It was su such a violent storm that it broke off one of the branches of that tree. And we were sitting there, and the branch fell <laughs> just in front of me where I was chanting japa. And the, um, the, the temple pujari was there, you know, sitting with us as well. And when that branch fell, phew, I was looking at it with great, you know, awe <laughs> and greed. <laughs> and the, the pujari was there, and he was looking at it too, so he looked at me, and I looked at him, and he said, all right, Marsh, take that branch. So I, I, I took that branch, and I eventually, when I came back to, um, back to Europe, uh, back to Poland, one of my disciples, um, Vadesham Das, he carved uh, japa beads from, from that branch. And I'd, I'd like to show you that these are my japa beads carved from the, um, the, the a branch on, uh, uh, of the tree under which who witnessed at the Kalpa Vikshitriya, obviously, Naratam Dasakura tree of This is <laughs> causeless mercy. His sacred beads. Hmm. And there was so much um, wood in that branch that also even the, um, my counter beads were made from that sacred tree. It's all the mercy of Sri Prabhupada. But in Vrindavan, if the broken branch was small enough, the Brajabhasis would, and still to this day, they fix it back on the tree with melted lac. They, 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 melt, they put it back on the tree with, with melted lac. If, it was, if it's too big, they, they place it in samadhi. Hare Krishna. So now, the last type of samadhi I would like to mention is a broom samadhi. There's a broom samadhi. Brooms which sadhus or the acharyas used to sweep the forest with every day for the pleasure of the divine couple. When such brooms got old um, and worn down, sadhus used to dig a hole in the ground and place the broom inside. And on top of that, they would grow a small plant so that no one could uh, stand on top of such a broom samadhi. Now the broom samadhis, uh, I have to remember, uh, they're called uh, Sohani samadhis. Sohani samadhis. S-O-H-A-N-I. Sohani samadhi. And they can still be seen today in Vrindavan. Down at Nidivan, uh, you can find these Sohani Samadhis at Se in Sevakunj, Birhavan, and actually um, there's still some existing uh, the first few kilometers of the Govardhan Parikama Marg. Such wonderful details. So these are just some of the different types of Samadhi traditions in our um, Gaudiya Vaishnav. Sampradaya, in Vrindavan and, um, and in, in other places as well. And I hope that all this information, this nectar, will help to awaken uh, your love for our acharyas and for their samadhis, and you will take the time to visit those samadhis when you uh, go to, to Braj. So, I would like to end today's class with a sweet poem by a Brajabhasi poet named Bhalabhadas. He wrote this poem hundreds of years ago, and it's very touching to the heart. O mind, always depend exclusively on the lotus feet of the Acharyas. Sing their glories, for they will grant you fulfillment in an instant. Day or night, keep company with, Lord's, with the Lord's devotees alone, and never eat anything. Never eat anything that has not first been offered to the Lord. The poet Balaba advises to renounce attachment to anything other than the dust of the Acharya's lotus feet. Thank you, Balaba Das. Hare Krishna. And thank you, Srila Prabhupada, for giving us access to all these wonderful glories of Sri Vrindavan Dham. 
So thank you, Prabhu. We'll, <laughs> we're busy up, again, we're busy up here on the Baltic Sea coast with our festival tour. Literally a festival every day, except Monday, but we're busy with other arrangements. And um, we're busy, but I, I do find time to research, and I, I, I love giving these classes to inspire you in your, in your Braj Bhakti. So see you next Friday. O glories to Sri Rupa Shishi Gorni Tai Ki, Shishi Krishna Balaram Ki, Shishi Vada Shramashundar Ki, Vrindavan Eshwati, Shimati Vada Rani Ki, all the Samadhis in Vrindavan Ki, Mayapur Dham Ki, Shishi Gorni Tai Ki, Shri Krishna Shankirtan Yagya Ki, Nitai Gaur Pemanandi, Jay Jay Sisi Radhe.